the fight fans joining us and the millions watching around the world. Yes, ladies and gents, welcome back to In The Red Corner podcast with me, Ross. I hope everyone's well. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much to all the new and old subscribers. Big respect to you all. Thank you uh, to Rick Doherty for the couple of uh, super chats that he's been sending. Really appreciate it. Really helps the channel. Jab that like button. Jab the subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. Uh, gets the gets this video out there and things like that. So uh, thank you very much for that. Tonight, I'm joined by Matt Pepper, who's joined the BKFC. Um, he's got an MMA background. Well, I'll let him tell you. I'll let him tell you. Bring him on now. Here he is. Yes, Matt, how are you doing? You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, all good. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cheers for having me on. Oh, look, thank you very much for coming on. So, a new signing for the BKFC. You're coming, uh, yeah, in, cruise, you're coming in at cruise weight. Yeah, I've got to drop a few pounds, like, but yeah, that's what I'm going to be fighting at 93 kilograms. Yeah, and you normally fight at heavyweight, though, don't you? Yeah, last one was heavyweight. Like, um, I had a few years off, but um, like I was just telling you, uh, I bulked up because I was doing a bit of pro wrestling. So, put a bit of size and that on and fought last at heavyweight. But I think 93 will suit me a bit better because um, I'm only a small heavyweight, really. Yeah. Well, yeah, like I say, thank you for coming on. Um, for those that don't know you, then, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into combat sports? Yeah, I started when I was about 11 with kickboxing. Then I went on from there to amateur boxing, then professional boxing. Then um, amateur MMA, then unlicensed boxing, then back to pro boxing, then pro MMA, then professional wrestling, then back to pro MMA, and now we're in BKFC. <laughs> so it's been a long journey. So that was a quick rundown there. So uh, yeah. you started so amateur boxing. Is that would you say that's your background? Really, boxing is your background. Yeah, boxing is probably my background. Yeah, I spent a lot of time um, boxing uh, when I was a kid. And then, to be honest, I turned pro really early, stupidly, 18 years old. I was not mature enough mentally or physically to really do any good. And I was putting with people, a few of them went on to be really good, like a couple of them were world champions. Um, but it was about, back then, you were kids, you're stupid. It was about just getting paid and about the money. And I look back at that now, that period of my life, and to be honest with you, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. I mean, it was it was good for the fact that I, we, we, I made a bit of money and it paid for me and my missus to move in together who's now my wife, so we've been together a long time. Um, but on the like uh, bad side of it, it's like you look back at that now and I think, oh, God, there's all them losses on there that, you know, I should. I, don't get me wrong, I want to beat in all the people that I fought, but a few of them I would have done, but I just didn't put any effort in whatsoever. And, you know, like when I look back at that now, I'm pretty much ashamed of it. I don't even like admitting about that, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, like the battle of pro boxing, honestly, it's like from 99 to 2003, if I could wipe that off the slate, I would do. So how many fights did you have in that time? Um, I think I had um, 10 pro fights um, and only won a one. Um, right, yeah. People like on like two days notice and things like that. And honestly, there was no, I didn't train at all for any of them. It was just um, one of them things you do when you're a kid and you're stupid and you're young and you think you'll never regret it. And you look yeah. back now. You no, know, honestly, sometimes I have proper self-loathing about it. You know, like I, I actually hate myself for some of that. You know, like, you know what I think? <laughs> What a knob, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> now, well, look, I mean, it's brought you to where you are now and it's made you, you know, it's, you know, it doesn't define who you are, but it's it's made you the person that you are today. And it's yeah, a I mean, learning... You learn yeah, I mean, look it. at it sometimes and there's a blessing to it and there's, um, there's a pros and cons to it. I mean, the pros are uh, people look at that record and think I'm shy, um, but the cons are obviously I've got to look at that record and think, fucking hell, you are shy, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but like you say, you know, if you put the work in and stuff, you were young and naive and stupid, not maybe not mentally and physically ready for it, like you say. Then yeah, I mean, I was. There's know. no way. I mean, I look back now and I was like, um, honestly, when I was 18, I was like a 12 year old kid. You know, like um, no strength, no real, you know, man strength. Didn't have a man strength or anything like that. And uh, I was pretty much fed to the lions. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
So from there, you went into amateur MMA, did you say? Um, yeah, well, yeah, pro boxing, yeah. Then um, I had a few years off um, and decided, you know what, I'm going to give this another go. Um, went back into uh, amateur MMA because a mate of mine was doing it. Um, I had two, uh, two wins, one loss with that. And then um, I went to go get my boxing license back, um, but I ended up going with a motor boxing commission. Um, and I had three fights with those. Uh, won one, lost one, drew one. Um, and then Box Rec started taking the Malta Commission's uh, records off. They sort of admitted them. They like um, decided that they weren't going to record their results along with a few other boxing associations. So I thought, you know, there's no point in doing this. I, it, what you do, you want it to be recorded, especially when you're putting all the effort in. So yeah. I thought, now, now, now it's time to go on and uh, turn pro in MMA, which, which I did. You know, like, um, And to be honest with you, I've, I've done a lot better in MMA than I ever did in boxing. Yeah. I mean, how's your ground game and everything then? Is that pretty good? Um, ground games, like, um, I've never really, I'm more of a get back up type of guy. You know, like, yeah. um, it's like I won't stay on the ground for as long as, as long, any longer than I have to. You know, like, I'm more of a let's get back up and bang sort of thing. And uh, to be honest with you, I think the people that match me up know that. So they always put me in fun fights. You know, um, it's always usually against someone with the same mindset. And, you know, it's either, you know, me or them. Yeah. I mean, I've watched a few of your fights and things. I mean, you've, you've fought Will Cairns, who's obviously been around the block for a long, long time. And I've Ash seen a, uh, yeah, Ash Gibson. Um, I've seen a great fight of yours as well. It was almost like a taekwondo stand shooting. in. I finished you yeah, with a spinning yeah. back kick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to say I've got. I started off kickboxing, so I can still. I mean, I don't know if I can now. I'm an heavyweight, but I used to be able to do all them like <laughs> fighting kicks and all that crazy shit. But uh, when I came back as an heavyweight, I thought we'll stay on the ground here and just concentrate on like, low kicks and hands. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of a hiatus from there, and uh, you went into professional wrestling. I just didn't like um, training to be a pro wrestler and stuff like that. Um, went all over the country with people, like training. I even got all my gear and that made up. You know, in fact, I wore that gear in my last fight. I thought I'm getting my money's worth out of that. You know, um, <laughs> so that's why I had them really tight little pants on. You know, um... <laughs> and uh, and now obviously in the BKFC. Um, how how did that come about then? Well, I mean, last year when I saw they were doing the show at Wembley. Um, I spoke to Bakewell about that, but I'd had a bit of time off. So, I mean, I don't think it was realistic to expect to be on that show, you know, with the names that they had on it. Yeah. Uh, so I came back, um, fought Oliver Basil at Heavyweight, won that, um, which put me right up in the rankings. I was 20th in the country. I think I'm 22 now still. Um, and from there, um, I was going to try and make a real go at the MMA, but then um, a mate of mine, Jamie Hendry, he started fighting on BKFC, and he keeps saying, like, have a go, have a go, have a go. So I was like, oh, all right then. Next thing I know, he's messaged Bakewell, who's then rang me. So it's all gone from there. You know, like, and to be honest with you, um, it, it gets me going. Bare knuckle boxing gets me going. You know, like, um, I've been offered, like, uh, in the last six, seven weeks, I've been offered three MMA title fights. Two of them were abroad. I mean, one was in France, a uh, title fight against a guy that fought on Bellator. Um, a few years back, that would have been like a dream come true, but... BKFC sort of gets me going, that done. You know, like, yeah. it, it still gets me going, don't get me wrong, I still love MMA and stuff like that, but this seems to get me up in the morning running and get my blood pumping and, you know, like, I really want to have a go at this. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's so different to, I mean, I love it. I've, I've said before, I love all combat sports, but bare knuckles is just something special. It's something a little different and it's so new and, you know, up and coming now. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's one hell of a sport to get into now. Um, yeah, I mean... I could watch it all the time. Like I said to you before, he's like he's like a mega fan, you know. Like, um, honestly, he drives my um, his mum mental with all the stuff he's going on about all the time. Who's going to win this? Who's going to win that? He's even started <laughs> drawing up his own BKFC rosters and and stuff like that. I said, you better get me on there, but he never does. You know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, what's the long term plan for you then? Um, to be honest, like this is probably like um. Uh, the last chapter, but the last, um, but I want to have a good few years at this. Don't get wrong, in between, I'll probably go back to MMA at some point, but I really want to have a proper go at this. You know, like, um, you know, it's do or die. So um, I think people will enjoy watching me fight because it's never boring. You know, um, people always get the money's worth when I'm on. You know, someone gets knocked out every time. You know, like, um, it, that, that's the main mindset, you know, not the other person out. Um, but the people I'm training with now, They've got me relaxing a little bit more. The end goal is still the same, to knock the opponent out, but we're taking our time a bit more. You know, like, if you watch that last fight, 
I wasn't rushing in. I was pick my punches, pick the kicks, and the knockout came. Um, yeah. Before, like, it used to be me or them or me, me or you. Uh, but now we, 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 the mindset is it's you and you're getting knocked the fuck out. <clears throat> um, when when are you expecting to be out for the BKFC? Do you know yet at all? Has anything been mentioned? Or When I spoke to Bakewell a few weeks back, he did have a date in mind, but I don't want to say because it's not in my place to say. Like, yeah, what, yeah, what... yeah. But if that's what they're, if that's going to be um, struck off and that's going to be the fight, then the, all, the dates and everything work for me. Um, gives me plenty of time to get ready. Um, to, ideally, I just want to be out before the end of the year. I've put a lot of stuff off ready for this. You know, like, um, like I said, I could have been in France in September. Um, you know, like four-day paid trip with a title fight. But I haven't. I've put that off because I'm fully focused on just doing this. <clears throat> yeah. So are you in camp now? I mean, not, not full camp. I mean, I never let myself get out of shape. Um, but... I mean, I could go out and do a seven-mile run, but if someone said to me, you want to do five or six-round sparring, I'd probably be bleeding out my ass. You know, like, it's one of them. I'm always fit, oh, yeah. but fighting fit. I mean, um, I like to have a good 10 weeks to get ready for it, and if this date works out, we've got a few more weeks to play with, and then we'll be down to the 10-week, the you know, like, uh, main camp. <clears throat> yeah. Have you got anyone in your sights, then, that you're kind of looking at in the in the cruiserweight division? I mean, um, I don't want to say who they're going to match with because, again, it's not. I don't want to announce something that. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. It might not even be them. It might not be them anyway. But the guy that they've got in mind, um, he's had one and won it, but it was on BFBA. You know, um, Bakewell's yeah. old promoter. Uh, he yeah. had one and. One, but I don't think looking at him, um, what I've heard, he hasn't been active. Um, so um, it'd be an ideal fight for me. You know, like I said to him when we spoke about it, I'll fight anyone from ninety-three kilograms up to heavyweight. You know, like I'm not. I'm not here to sort of ask for easy fights or anything like that. I've never had an easy fight. You know, like, um, I'm willing to go with anyone. You know, um, I, I'm not going to mess around because there's no point. I'm not going to change now. You know, like, um, I am what I am. Yeah. Is there any fighters that you kind of, like, admire in the in the BKFC that you kind of think, you know, you know, not that you'd like to, uh, like, copy their style or anything like that, but, you know, you think, you know, they're a good fighter? Oh, yeah, Mike Perry, people are. I love Mike Perry. Um, obviously in Britain you've got um, Danny Christie love watching him um, Ricardo um, I've trained with him a few times we've known each other years um, he's another one you know he's always in exciting fights uh, I mean, yeah, you're not too one. far away from Rico are you? is it Doncaster you're based just down the road yeah so um, yeah I mean um, hopefully I'll get a bit of training with him with those you know getting ready for this one um, I mean um, Ricardo's trainer Dex Spellman he messaged me yesterday asking me about some sparring so we're trying to get that sorted for beginning of September so everything seems to be falling into place for me. You know, like, um, hopefully this date gets sorted and it's confirmed and then we can really start getting the um, finishing touches in and get a real yeah. good camp. That's what I want. I want to make... Someone said to me once, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. That's what I want to do. I want to make a big first impression. And um, I think people like the way I fight. You know, like, um, it's exciting. Um, take one to give one. Um, you know, it's it'll be good. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't think there's many better coaches out there than Dex Spellman, to be honest. I mean, he's unbelievable, the work that he does. Yeah, yeah, he's done it all. I mean, in boxing himself, you know, like um, 100% I, um, respect him. You know, it'd um, be great to go do some sparring with his lad and, you know, you know, maybe get some pads and that in and get some training with him as well while I'm there. Excellent. Um, before we wrap this up, mate, have you got any uh, gyms, teammates, sponsors that you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, I definitely want to say um, thanks to my sponsors, uh, Scumfop Hot Tub, uh, Scumfop Hot Tub Mega Store. Uh, brought me a really nice ship, short pair of shorts, like um, Colin Peak uh, Plasterer um, and Alan Birdie's Property Services Limited. <clears throat> they you know, like uh, they've backed me. Uh, they've only just come on board because after a couple of years off, I never asked for sponsorship. You know, when you come back and you're coming off a loss, you think uh, no one's going to be interested, but. To be honest with you, um, every, you know, I've been, been beyond helpful, these lot. You know, they've given me what I needed. They're helping me out. And I think once this date's announced, I think I'll shift a lot of tickets as well. There seems to be a lot of interest in this one. Yeah. I, for one, am really looking forward to watching you performing there, and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's honestly, I can't wait either. Honestly, it's um, I just want the date. I just want the date announced, you know, so I can really get down to it and, and start training hard. You know, like, um, like I said, I've waited a long time for this. You know, I've, like, I've put a lot of... Uh, big opportunities off um, just to concentrate on this, you know, like, and, um, like yeah. I said, I'm bang. <sighs> Excellent. The BKFC do seem to drag the heels a little bit. I mean, we're only just over seven weeks away from the next show and there's still nothing really been announced there yet. So uh, hopefully yeah, that gets announced soon. I just don't want it like sprung me right. You're fighting next week. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, 
that's the thing. But I mean, obviously, like as, as soon as it's all signed and sealed, like, I'm sure you'll tell me, and then we can we can get it on. Like, yeah. Well, when that happens, you're more than welcome to come back on in the red corner as well. Yeah, we'll talk again. Much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, honestly. Um, thanks for having me on. Honestly, it's uh, it's been great talking to you. Yeah, you as well, my man. Thanks very much. Keep in touch, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, no problem. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Matt. Tara. Matt Kimbo Pepper there, everyone, ladies and gents. There he is, new BKFC signing, so I'm looking forward to seeing him out there. Um, coming up on Sunday, we've got the BKFC tryouts. That's going to be happening. Uh, I'll be down there myself, hosted by Danny Christie, Mickey Terrell, um, Luke Nevin, at Luke Nevin's hard gym at Hard Hitters. So I'll be bringing you some footage from there. Uh, hopefully talking to some of the guys, that are, the prospects that are going to be there as well. So looking forward to that. Um, tomorrow, I'm joined by J.R. Ridge, um, the Lion. He was one half of the main event, BKFC 48 in Albuquerque, New Mexico, August 11th. Obviously, we can't get we can't get over there. So download the BKFC app. It only costs a couple of pints a month, and you get everything, all the streams for free. Well, with that subscription, but um, yeah, thank you very much. Tune in again tomorrow to watch his interview, watch the podcast with Matt with <laughs> with, J, with J.R. Ridge. Uh, thank you very much again, everyone. Really appreciate it, and I'll uh, speak to you all later. But the white fans joining us and the millions watching around the world. Big shout out to Jerry Kavner as well. Don't forget to jab that like button and subscribe.